Right. Thank you very much for speaking uh, with the film dimension today. Um, you are a writer and director. You make your own films. You write your own films. You've uh, produced several short films that won various different awards, and you're also working on a feature film at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Karen. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, and um, it's funny because. I'm at that stage now where I'm like developing, trying to develop a feature, but um, I have like like three or four different ideas and it's kind of, you just kind of put different ones out there and see what people respond to. And it's all very complicated. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think from being a creative, being a filmmaker, being someone who wants to make films and has lots of ideas, I think anyone who's, um, comes up with art, if you like, has lots of ideas all the time. But somehow, sometimes the the mechanisms of the machinery of like, you've got to plan six six months a year in advance to make your feature film almost stifles the idea that you could wake up different days with different ideas in your mind and you just want to do do those things. Do you think the the process somehow spoils it? I think that it's. I always try and think of making a film or creating a series idea as an evolution because if you kind of hook onto that one thing and you have it really fixed in your head you're ultimately going to be disappointed because filmmaking as is life is a collaborative evolving process and when you kind of accept that and it, you know you let the ideas flourish on their own that's even like short films I've made in the past now I look back and the idea even though it's cemented on film like I'm thinking of loads of different things I would have taken the character or how I might have tweaked the story or how I as a human just use that story now um so it's kind of always evolving and I quite like that process um I think when mm. I was first starting out I was really sort of resistant against that and the collaborative nature of, of filmmaking in a way, because you just think, no, it has to be exactly me. How the beauty of film is getting all these different voices and different creatives who are way better at things than I am. You know, if I tried to design a set or something, it'd be awful. Like I can't draw mm -hmm. and I can't do any of these things. So ultimately it's like giving and taking, you know, you present the core idea and then everyone else kind of pitches in their, their unique yeah. strength and makes something even better than yeah. what you have in your head. Sure, sure. So how did you get started? Um, when did you realise you wanted to make films? What was your process to make to get to the point where you made your first uh, feature, uh, first short film? How did that sort of come about? Well, I've always loved films and growing up, I kind of watch films again and again and again and like for me films are comfort food literally my hobby was just yeah. watching films and um, so I always knew I wanted to do something to do with filmmaking and um, I didn't really know what screenwriting was like I liked writing plays but I didn't know what actually sitting down writing screenplay was and it was my second year of university I um I was working at my family business, my family's business, not my family business, my family's business in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I had the afternoons off and, you know, I didn't really have anything else to do. So I just said, okay, I'm gonna try writing a screenplay. Um, and I got resources from online and taught myself and I just fell in love with it and it kind of clicked. And I was like, ah, so this is what I can do. And this is how I can express all these films that I've got in my head. In a few screenplays I decided to make a film while I was at university I don't count it as my first short film because it's terrible sure. <laughs> so sure. it's like hidden somewhere away on the internet that nobody we is ever gonna see <laughs> no exactly um, but doing that I just realized that directing was the thing I wanted to do and um, luckily when I finished university I met a very famous film director on a train weirdly oh wow yeah uh, and Pride and Prejudice and things like that and yeah I met her on a train and I just kind of stalked her on the train for a little bit and <laughs> uh, went up and talked to her and sort of said I really like your films and I'm you know just started writing films myself and making stuff and she said 
why don't you come work for me and I was like really oh. yeah. that's an that's I mean that's an amazing that's a film story isn't it yeah it, yeah it's crazy and it was a great timing because I just finished uni and I wanted to get into the film I'm not in that world at all and um yeah it's kind of like how do I break in how do I even like get a first interview somewhere or something so yeah I was pretty pretty lucky um and then I worked for her for like a year and that was basically a crash course in writing directing producing like just understanding the business all these things that are really beneficial for you to like understand if you're a director and a writer mm, mm. Um, well so that, that's that's quite a good uh, start so after that I guess you thought well it's all falling into place and I'm gonna yeah. keep, keep doing it so what was your next um, short uh, project uh, after that that you went on and did on yourself on your own yes yeah, so my first short film was Polly which is what we'll probably talk about a bit more and sure. I am um, I had a lot of different ideas for films and I was trying to think of what might be the most simple to do. And yeah, it wasn't very actors and had multiple locations, but still, you know, that's me. I'm always way too ambitious for like the budget or funding I'm just like, let's do all these crazy things. Um, now and then we shot it um, in 2016 and finished it in 2017 and it was terrifying but in, in a way um, less fear when I first started because I just kind of was like doing what I wanted and like mm, like mm. just kind of going for it um, and now looking back obviously I see all the mistakes and think oh I should have changed that and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but I really had a, a lot of fun doing it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a very intense experience. <sighs> but not, not so intense that you thought, I never want to do it again. Obviously, you weren't too put off with that the intense. process. <laughs> um, looking back no. on Polly, what would you, the one thing that you could, if you could go back, and, and change about either the look of the film, the process, what you did, what would be the one thing that you think, okay, no, now that I know what I know, I would do that differently? I think mostly sticking to my guns more of what I wanted to do and the shots I wanted to get. Uh, I was so, when you're making a short, you're on borrowed time, you know, your mm. people are doing, you know, you have to compromise a lot. But with Polly, I was so, overly concerned of like making it a good experience for everyone and like not that it shouldn't be a good experience um I was just trying to be so easygoing and help kind of just everyone along and seem like I'm thankful for everyone doing mm. it um I kind of like let other people take more creative control and there's things in the film I'm ultimately not very happy and um, it's not specifically the look or specifically certain things so I wish I'd stuck to my guns a bit more and with every single film that is a common theme I look back on and wish I had done more but I feel like as I'm going along I'm getting better and better at sort of putting mm. my foot down at what I want what I don't want um, so yeah and I think that's something that's me probably with my personality a bit as well as like you yeah, kind of being a bit more like. I mean, it's hard, away. isn't it? It's when you've got a team around you and certainly as in your case, you were doing it for the very first time that you've got other people going, well, maybe you should do it this way. And you kind of see, well, maybe they know what they're talking about. Um, but of course, yeah. maybe they don't. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah it, it must be very hard. Hence why I guess directors have that reputation of sort of being difficult to work with or having a very, very um, precise vision of what they want to achieve. Um, mm. After Polly, what was your next uh, project after that? And again, how did that evolve from your approach and what you learned from the previous one to the one after that? 
Well, I was kind of just itching. Every time I finish a project, I'm ready to jump onto another one. Um, so again, I had a lot of ideas and I wanted to do something quite different because um, Polly is kind of fantasy, it's sort of surreal, um, set in like a heightened world. And I wanted to do the opposite and do like a smaller domestic drama piece, really working with the actors out maybe the visual side which is a really terrible thing to say as a director but more I just wanted to get like under the skin of these characters and like work with the actors and because I had um Polly we crowdfunded some money for budget but this was just a project I just wanted to do and I think I spent like I self-funded like 500 pounds just to like bring some actors around mine and um mm -hmm. I got a, a friend um to get a DP on board like as a favor which was very very kind he just kind of shot it for free he was in amazing for me it was quite like a different exercise and I kind of wanted to work on a different directing muscle I suppose you could say yeah um and yeah and it's a very small like intimate family drama um about a mum who kind of works as a bouncer behind her husband's back and they don't she hasn't told her daughter about it and it's just about this family dynamic and mm, and how mm. if you kind of keep secrets from one another that ultimately make things worse rather than better um, sure again from, so that's from kind that of where my second film took me yeah yeah no i, I get that and it's, it's a sort of organic sort of pro uh, progression um mm. Again, from someone perhaps who's not made any uh, films yet, that wants to get into the world of filmmaking, that want to go about their first short, um, from your experience of having made a, a few short films, going through the festival route, all of that sort of stuff, raising money, um, what, what do people get wrong, both in their approach to what they think a, few, a short film would be like, and um, do you, do you think there's another way to do it? Because there's lots of short films out there at mm -hmm. the moment, but obviously only a handful of places at a handful of sort of very, very uh, well-known festivals, um, which most obviously, unfortunately, won't win. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any sort of insights or any sort of, oh, I wish I knew that sort of thing? Yeah, I guess, I guess there's, the question of who are you making this short film for and that's something that I've been made more and more aware of as I've made more shorts mm. so with Women of the Night which was my second short that is not a festival film and would barely do well in festivals because it's not got a hookiness to it it's not got a really clever concept that can be explored in five minutes it's like mm. a 10 minute snapshot into what feels like a feature or feels like you know, and traditionally those don't do well at festivals. The best, the best films at short um, shorts at film festivals are ones which have, you know, a clever, quirky concept, and that can really be demonstrated in a short yeah. amount of time. Or it's really about a uh, one single character that, you know, has something about them that is explored in a short amount of time. Um. So as I've been going along, like with my last short. Uh, which we're in post-production for Catch a Butcher, even though it's a really, we were always aware of wanting it to do well at festivals. So trying to make sure that it was a certain length and that it had a certain production value and it had a certain um, concept, which really was unique. Whereas my um, film I made before this, Kindling, and then Woman of the Night before that, I was making them more for me to explore what I was like as a director in terms of working with actors and um, establishing my visual style more. Mm -hmm. Really important thing to think about who you're making the short film for um, and actually be aware of what life it will have after because because like Women and I didn't really have a massive life after I made it but that's fine because the point of it was for my own personal exploration as a director. Um, sure. And with kind Kindling similarly we kind of we made it because we wanted it to demonstrate to the BFI that this is what we could do on like £3,000. Um, we didn't make it to be a massive festival success. We kind of had that goal. They would invest 
and ask for a bigger film, which would then be the big hope, hopefully it will be good at festivals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a piece of advice I would kind of say to people. Um, and that, that decision will kind of influence whether you then make the mistakes or not in like making it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I understood. And that, that's good advice actually. I think, I think it's quite easy, so again, starting out being unsure and just kind of playing the game it's you almost feel that i've i've got to get into festivals or i i've got to make a, a crowd pleasing film for say the, the the judges um again from from your point of view where you are right now still being an independent filmmaker um and sort of still starting on on your journey although you you've already done like quite a, quite a lot of stuff um how do you how do you see the uh the film world before you certainly in, in 2021 because things are kind of a bit crazy at the moment in terms of films and release dates and all that sort of stuff um is is the, the film world inviting is it um scary is there walls glass ceilings all that sort of stuff like what, what's your what's your kind of thoughts on that um it's it's quite hard for me to comment really because I think everyone's journey into the industry is so unique and in by that way people who get into the industry usually are exceptionally lucky like someone in it um and that's why like as kind of a young woman I've actually been really supported in this industry so far I haven't faced too many barriers I mean there's there's like smallish not so much but things that maybe have happened which may have got the same opportunity or this but because I've had such great breaks I've actually mm. had a lot more opportunities than a lot of other people that I know um so I feel like my direct experience hasn't been very 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 hard and I do kind of work like a machine constantly because you have to do that anyway yeah. Um, but I've been really fortunate in the people that I've met and the connections that I've made um, from really meeting Gorinda on the train. You know, that story's opened a lot of doors because that, that's the business, isn't it? It's kind of like who you know or like yeah, yeah, something, yeah. something quirky that might have happened. Yeah, that kind of then gets through the door. And if they then like your work in you, then it kind of evolves naturally. Um, and like I say, network fund, funding. Um, I was really like we applied for it and got it the first time we applied and I know that doesn't happen for a lot of people mm. um but then you could say that happened because I had spent the past five years making other shorts which maybe on the face of it aren't as successful because they didn't go to festivals and everything but they were kind of building a portfolio to then prove to a big body like BFI that were kind of worth investing in because uh, we've done all this on our own so far and it like show you. and I think like with the cinema and I'm hoping that once kind of COVID's over people will be craving to go back to the cinema and do like social events and I think they will yeah I feel like it's going to be a cinema boom because everyone want to be going out and doing things and I I've only seen two films in the cinema last year no wait, I saw three films in the cinema last year and um the last film I went to see was St. Maud and it was before our cine world closed right. and, and my own in such a long time but I went on my own because my partner doesn't like horror films so I was like I'll just go and support cine world before it shuts um and I loved the experience and I was just like man going to the cinema is such an amazing thing to do and like I totally think when they're allowed to be open again and more films are coming out yeah, I, I'm more optimistic than pessimistic that it's all going to turn on to streaming and stuff like that. Um, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, there's a place for everything, but there's, there's, yeah, still going to cinema is is an experience in itself that hopefully doesn't disappear. Um, so basically, am I right? And again, if if I'm if I've got it wrong, please correct me. But are you kind of saying that maybe again if you're starting a film career wanting to start a film career is basically it's like it takes a long time and you can't you can't rush it you can't just go right we do one 
one short and we're going to win something and then we're on to some big budget film it's you've got to put the effort in you've got to you've got to create you've got to make content definitely and like i was just say the like best piece of advice is like to anyone who wants to make films is to just make it like make one with your phone with some friends even if it's terrible you know it's just that's that's teaching you everything you need to know really yeah i've also heard other people say things that they think perhaps there's maybe too much content at the moment you know floating around there's too many people (laughs) wanting to become filmmakers um what do you think do you think there's too much content or do you think that just there's good stuff and bad stuff and stuff in between yeah i think i lean more on the side that there's good stuff and bad stuff and all the stuff in between because i feel like if people kind of dictate why someone should be a filmmaker over somebody else then that doesn't really I probably would fall out of the category I don't know like I don't know how I would quantify who deserves to be making sure films and directors famous directors they all have completely different styles you have directors who are really technical and then you have directors who are not very technical and maybe don't know about cameras and all this sort of stuff but Mm. are really great at bringing the team together to tell that story and you know um yeah I mean there is a lot of content but you know that just means there's probably a lot of not so good content so you just ignore that (laughs) yeah (laughs) what they turn on or turn on or because I mean festivals are always going to be looking for the others if there's being more content you probably will have just as much bad content as good content being made and um you know I'm sure that uh maybe not but I'm I would expect festivals kind of meet the demand of like what they're getting in as in I'm sure 50 years ago they were showing like 10 films rather than maybe they show 100 now you know so I can imagine that they kind of evolve while filmmaking evolves sure and again with with technology and the internet obviously it's opened up the ability to to shoot something on your phone and edit it on a laptop and all that sort of thing that 20 years ago wasn't so available um Mm. Projecting yourself, say, 10 years in the future, what sort of films do you think you would like to be making then? Would it still be ones that you are dreaming up, that are your own films, or would you be more um, uh, more interested in being brought in and, and direct someone else's story? Um, what, what sort of, you know, if you had a big budget and everything else, what, what sort of stuff would you like to produce I would love to do a mixture which is probably a cop-out answer because I think everybody would probably say that in a dream world um but yeah I just I have so many ideas and I'm constantly coming up with ideas and I adapt them for like series or films or whatever because because I work as a screenwriter as well and a lot of my job is like pitching series ideas and developing have all these ideas in my head and I feel like in 10 years if you could have like if I could have an amazing budget and shoot it like and then with the backing of like Disney to like in terms of being able to then get it out into the world I mean that would be the ideal situation really um but then I also am really interested in other people's stories and you know I'm reading a lot of books um which are getting you know optioned to made into other Mm and whenever I read one I'm just like I would love to make that um you, you know that when you hook onto an idea you hook onto an idea and I mean the other thing is like in 20 years I bet they're going to be it's really sad but I bet they'll be like remaking like Harry Potter by then do you know what I mean they'll probably be remaking yeah, so many will. films that are like really you know so I'm just kind of keeping my head like well, what would I like to direct as a remake um yeah I mean I they... love yeah just got to kind of keep in mind of like if somebody's made a film you really like and wish you were done in 20 minutes years you can... probably terrible <laughs> so many films but yeah I'm, made. some films never never seem to age and they go on and other films yeah even eight nine years after they've been made you just think oh that just looks really dated and everything else 
Um, do, you, do you think film compared to say music, although a lot of people would perhaps say the same if, you know, maybe if you're into classical music and you would consider say, you know, modern pop music or hip hop as in just sort of um, inferior or whatever, but do you think film by some people is taken too seriously that the idea of having just a fun film that's just something fun to watch um, is somehow kind of all oh, that just equals bad? No, I don't think so. I'll tell you why, because like film is about escapism and me as a kid, really hard times and to diminish like fun, good family or not just family, but any sort of fun films where it takes you on this adventure and maybe it's not the most sophisticated one. Um, you can't diminish the power it has on an individual and like an individual's experience. Um, obviously you can pr appreciate sort of the greater art and um, the technical side and, and, you know, go look at film more philosophically and, you know, what filmmakers is trying to do. And that's great, but that, that makes it very like small. Mm. Well, as people just a lot of people go to the cinema to escape or to be entertained and there's nothing wrong with that and um yeah I definitely think they have their place like my the films I make probably aren't for that audience to be entertained per se so much um but in no way would I like that like not think it's like as valuable so I can't remember who it was but there's a very famous director who is saying, oh, any film just to end it's like, well, no, because that's, you know, it's a huge part of, especially kids growing up, you know, yeah, them yeah. having, watching something that's entertaining and giving them a sense of escapism. Like a lot of my favourite films, I always have two lists of favourite films because I have my list of favourite films, which like as a filmmaker, I like will say, but then I've got like my favorite films, which are like I say like my comfort food, which I love, mm. and I know they're terrible. Like I know they're anyone else. What what are they? I'd probably say they're I don't know why. Just like I can't like in the heat of the moment now. <laughs> um, yeah. But like like some Disney films, like Emperor's New Groove, is my all time favorite film. <laughs> um, but I know a lot of people would be like, what's a Disney film? How can that as a filmmaker be in your like top five films? I was like, well, it is. Um, you know, as a kid, I loved, okay, I loved watching Charlie's Angels, which isn't a great film, but as a kid, like watching it, like, I just loved it. Was, was the loved it, late that 90s film, version like when I'm better? Giving down or... mm. Would you say the late 90s, I think oh. the late 90s, is better than the remake of yeah Charlie. it was late 90s i haven't actually seen the remake um, and neither have I. <laughs> no but um but the thing about like thinking about why i like charlie's angel so much like when i was a kid is because i think i went to see it in the cinema with my dad and like mm. it's those memories that you put with the film like, as a yeah. kid you're not watching it thinking this is very well made or mm. You're just enjoying it for the story and like all the colors and all the fancy flying across and you know what then is useful about those sorts of films um is obviously they have all the martial arts and stuff and from that i started watching jackie chan movies because i was like oh wow all these mm. like fine and then i ended up watching some older uh, chinese cinema and you think actually that is it's a way that i can introduce you to then yeah the yeah yeah more respect proper art you know um Sure. No, I, I, I totally get that. Um, anyone who's interested in what, what you're doing, what you're about to do, future um, projects, that sort of thing, um, what's the best way to follow you on social media? If, if, if you do social media, not everyone does. But. Yes, I do. I'm um, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's all the same handle, which is Cassia JJ. So just my first name, then JJ, um, and it's all like on my website and stuff. Um, and there I post about what I do to post a bit more. 
because um, it's been hard as well in the pandemic because you yeah. know not much been going on but also like film work in general takes so long to for sure. anything to move or happen and a lot of time you have to like keep it under wraps like because we were yeah. doing with Catch a Butcher and we we're um, working with the BFI network who's like funded um, part of it like we weren't allowed to say we were working with them for months months and months so it was like mm. oh, I couldn't it was sad but but you can now yes i can <laughs> <laughs> and um when when are you hoping to have that um complete and out uh, again i assume it's going through the festival route would that be later on this year or yeah so we're hoping to finish the film catch a butcher next uh, month so like end of february time and then kind of aim for like festivals uh that would be on in like september February time 2022 Ooh, that's a long way away but it, it will is. probably go really quickly <laughs> sure um yeah and it, like as I said like our aim for this film like making this film is for it to do well on the festival circuit um mm. and that was like art my purpose in my head for making this more so than say on my other films so mm. we'll see if that comes to fruition or not yeah well fingers crossed and um we'll we'll speak again as and when it's about to be you know uh given awards at bafta or who who knows um okay. <laughs> thank you well yeah think, fingers crossed and 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 why not because literally it's that's a funny thing isn't it it's you you can literally come out of nowhere although you haven't come out of nowhere clearly been working away at this for a long time but from from a bigger perspective that you can submit a film that just takes people and and moves them and they just they get what you're trying to do and then it is like overnight success but of course the overnight success was like five years previous build up to that but um yeah anything anything can yeah. happen um yeah no i completely agree thank you very much for uh, your time today um i'll let you go and um, we're going to be showing uh, uh, Polly on the film dimension, and I hope people enjoy it. Thank you so much for having time to chat, and uh, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it as well. <laughs>